here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. I am, I am finally, finally finished redecorating the inside of my house. As you all saw and as I've been highlighting in the first three episodes of my Christmas Switch Out series, I have been working on this side of the house. And I've completed all the spaces and all the centerpieces and everything else that I need, wanted to get done on this side. So the other day I moved in here. Well, here I sit in my living room. And I've come in here. It's kind of late in the evening. Chris is in the family room over there watching TV. So I still have these two rooms to finish decorating and I plan on doing the dining room lantern, dining room table lantern centerpiece and this centerpiece as tutorials to share with you guys. So I will wait till tomorrow to do those. But I thought I would start putting out some of the other decor pieces that I packed away before Christmas. Here's Chris and I love to go to Alaska and we've gone four times and I got this book from Apple after we did a cruise tour and I did this tour or did this book I made up this book oh my goodness I've aged since then <laughs> but this is a nice little book that this is kind of before I started blogging before I knew that I could be kind of interesting <laughs> to other people. Anyway, this sits up on top of the secretary. And what else do I have in here? It's like Christmas. That Pip Berry Garland, that'll go up on top of the secretary up there. Oh, the screen color. Love this pretty green color. Little birds. Kind of good. So, you guys can see what I'm going to be doing for the next little while. So, I'll catch y'all later. And let me go up here to the front door. This is the front door. And I will be highlighting this pretty wreath in a voiceover video after I get done this series. I created this before I had a YouTube channel. So I will do a voiceover for that. As has been the case with a few of my wreaths and centerpieces and so on. But anyway, this is where how the house looks when you first walk in the front door. Dining room to your left. And living room to your right. And family room through that little alcove. Alrighty, guys, I'm still working in here. I have finished this. Just the tabletop, just added the family pictures back in. There's my dad and my precious mama. He's no longer with us. And I'm going to save this centerpiece or this lamp centerpiece till tomorrow made that. It's one of my favorites there. And I've just been working a little bit in here. Still have stuff all over the floor. I'm going to do that lantern centerpiece tomorrow too. And I made up that. Today I am going to be doing some lantern tutorials. And I'm going to add this to episode, I think it'll be four, of my Christmas Switch Out series. And these lanterns go in my living room and dining room. I'm doing something different that is going to go from now all the way through until next Christmas, probably. I may add a few things to it, but to each arrangement, but basically this will be it for the year. Knowing myself, I'll probably want to, you know, switch things up a little bit, but 
I'm pretty tired right now. So I'm looking to find something that will have some lasting value through the year. <laughs> so what I've chosen to do for my big lantern centerpiece, I got myself a new tablecloth for Christmas at Home Goods, and it looks just like this. And I've purchased all of these pretty flowers to go around the lantern centerpiece. So we'll see how that works out. And then I will be doing the sideboard and my grandmother's lamp. I'll be doing around that centerpiece in much the same colors, but just a little bit differently. And then I'm gonna pull that green color into the living room and that's what will be around that little lantern centerpiece that sits on my mom's tray, which you will see in just a little while. So come create with me today and we're gonna make us some centerpieces. Be right back. Here's how I created the lantern centerpiece for the dining room table. I had to recreate another wheel, so to speak, because I had purchased that new tablecloth along with some placemats to match. And they didn't really have any of that green color that I love to use in those rooms in them. But I knew that I could transition into that green easily as I moved into the living room. So I went with the soft creams and silvers for the centerpiece and for the centerpiece on the sideboard that sits around my grandma's lamp. I always build my lantern centerpieces on trays so that they can be easily picked up and moved if need be. And as I've mentioned before, I own two of the same trays and lanterns and they are utilized to make my centerpieces for my kitchen and dining room tables. For this centerpiece, I've chosen to use a placemat that matches the tablecloth in the tray. I purchased these pretty silver mercury glass balls and the placemat will help them to stay put and not roll around when the tray is picked up and moved. I've also decided to go ahead and use three and a half by nine inch luminara candles inside of the lanterns because they are nice and tall and make a beautiful statement. The first thing that I do is to get the candles surrounded by a piece of pipberry garland all set up inside the lantern. Next, I placed a cream pipberry garland around the lantern. Not only does it look pretty, it also provides a nice base on which to add the remaining accent pieces. Then I added one cream and silver flower to the front of the lantern, one to the back, and one on either side. Next, I anchored the corners with those silver mercury glass balls. The next thing to go on are these money tree flowers. They came in several bushes that I had cut apart. I had many of them and I just added and added until I used up every single one. To finish off the base arrangement, I added some silver berry beads. They added just a little bling to an already soft and pretty arrangement. To finish, I made a bow topper to go over that bulbous piece that sticks up on the top of the lantern. I made a craft bow out of some pretty cream colored ribbon then I took a portion of a cream pipberry garland and another piece of ribbon and snugged both things into the same pipe cleaner that I used to close the bow. I pulled the pipberries forward and between the loops and I used the ribbon to tie the bow onto the lantern. I tied the ribbon shut using a square knot. My gracious, this centerpiece ended up turning out to be so, so pretty. So soft, so airy, and it matches that tablecloth to a T. I am very, very happy with the end result. 
Alrighty, here I am in my dining room and my sideboard. And as most of you probably know by now, this lamp was my grandmother's. And it's a very special lamp to me because my mom had it after my grandma did and then it was passed down to me. So it's a very special lamp and one that I try to always do something very special around. So I'm going to make this arrangement and this arrangement will stay here as I mentioned earlier pretty much for the rest of the year. I'm using simply two accent pieces. These kind of sparkly greenish leaves and these silvery cream flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and start building and as you all have seen with my cozy corners I like from to build left, back, from the back to the front and then over toward the center or toward the right side. For some reason that looks good to my eye when I do that. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this one too. I'm going to start in the back corner here with some of these leaves. First thing I'm going to do is put this little Excuse me, I have three accent pieces. This little bird, this little green bird, she's going to sit right there in the front corner. And then I'm going to do all of the green greenery first, pretty much. This little pit berry garland is going to disappear for us, but it's going to help to hold everything up and together. This green stuff came on one big bush and I cut it apart. Go ahead and add that flower here. See how I'm coming. Right there. Okay. Hide the bird. around to the back a little bit. And it's gonna come right in the front here. Spread out some of these green leaves. another little tough right in there because they don't want to be cooperating with me. And I need one more behind there. This is not just sit up right. it perfectly. All right, there we go. I picked and poked at it a little bit and I'm liking it a little better now. There's my mom and dad in that picture. Bless their hearts. They were hidden by all the foliage. <laughs> so I tamed the foliage a little bit and now you can see the picture a little better. So there we go. That makes me happier. <laughs> Alrighty, on to the next lantern centerpiece. It was time to create the lantern centerpiece for a little table that used to belong to my grandma and that sits in our living room. I used a tray that belonged to my mom for the base. I started by setting the lantern in the center of the tray 
And then I added a glass candle holder wrapped in a piece of cream fairy garland to the inside of the lantern. I placed a battery operated candle on the candle holder and shut the door. I began to build the outside arrangement starting with, what else, a Pitberry garland. I then added a teal colored gardenia to the front, back, and both sides. Then I added a tuft of flowers up and behind the magnolias. I finished it off by anchoring the corners with sparkly butterflies. I knew that I wanted to bring that pretty green and a darker teal color into the living room. Even though the dining room's arrangements were more in the silver and cream hues, I feel that it flows seamlessly from one room to the next. My work in these rooms is complete. Here are a few pictures of a couple of other spaces in the living room. I've incorporated the greens and teals along with some silvers and whites into these vignettes. When looking from one room, through the foyer to the other, it flows quite nicely. I am satisfied. These rooms always present me with a challenge because of the colors I've chosen to highlight. I'm used to working with the more traditional country colors in the burgundy, gold, and blue hues. So when I can actually bring these rooms to a cohesive feeling design, I give myself a little pat on the back for a job well done. Alrighty, you guys, <laughs> I just wanted to show you where all of the Christmas bins come to rest. And it's right here in my basement. Chris is going to hang all this stuff up. He said he's going to rig something up from the rafters up there and hang all of that up. But there are all of my Christmas bins. And here are all of my fall bins over here. I don't have as many fall as I do Christmas. I have some patriotic bins as well. And there are all of my extra wreaths. And things that really can't fit on a shelf. Chris is making this into a room though, so he's going to move all of my wreaths somewhere else. There you go. That's where everything comes to rest. Until next year. <laughs> all right, back upstairs I go. Ready? I'm about at the end of episode four here. Just came back up from downstairs and I'm ready to close this episode out. Tomorrow, I will start working on episode five. Give you a little sneak peek of one thing that will be in episode five. I just did this little wagon decor today. And I'll be showing you how I did that. That was really easy. Phew, it has been a week full of work, <laughs> but once I got the bins put away and out of the way and I was able to really concentrate on the redecorating, I was a happy girl. So I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good care. Bye-bye. <laughs>